Hello friends, database transactions can be confusing. The first time you hear about the word transaction, you imagine a bank transaction or some form of money transaction, but this one is not that. Although the bank transaction and money transaction is a valid use case for database transaction, but it's not the same thing. Even after we understand this concept, we wonder where we use transactions in database or in any application. And then the concept of acid, what is that, right? Well, after watching this video, I can assure you, you will never ever have to watch any other video as far as database transactions are concerned. So let's get started. Let's start with a simple example. If I ask you to fill fuel in your car by yourself at a fuel station, then in order to do it, you'll have to open the lid of the fuel tank, fill the fuel and then close the lid back. Here opening the lid, filling the petrol or diesel, whatever your car supports and then closing the lid is a single unit of work. All these three steps have to be done together. You cannot miss any of the single step. Otherwise, you know, there'll be some problem. For example, if I open the lid and then forget what I was doing, sit back in the car without closing the lid and drive away, then I'm moving around with my fuel tank open, which is not safe. If I open the lid, fill the fuel and do not close the lid, again, dangerous. If I open the lid and then close it without filling the tank, then I will leave the fuel station without any fuel. How dumb one could be to do that. Hence, I'm calling it a single unit of work that has three steps and all the three steps must be completed in order to the task to be completed. Let's take another example. Imagine you have a simple application student book. For a student to register for this application, he she has to fill a form. When a user registers, the login information, which is like the email and the password are saved in a user table. Whereas the other information is saved in a different user info table. In this flow, if the data is inserted in user table, but for some reason the user info table insert query fails, then our data would be inconsistent. Similarly, if the first insert in the user table fails and the second insert is done, then also data will be incorrect in the database. Hence, in this simple setup, we want both the queries to run successfully together acting as a single unit of work. If any one insert query fails, we should fail the entire registration process, show a message to the user to try again. There are many other similar use cases where we want this particular behavior. For example, if you're using an e-commerce website, when you purchase any item on successful payment, a new order is created, the product stock is updated and the cart info is deleted. That is one insert, one update and one delete that must act as a single unit of work. Because if some of it passes and some of it fails, the state of the database and the application becomes inconsistent. Agree? Maybe. I don't know. Let's take one more example. The bank transaction example. If there are two bank accounts, A and B, where A has an account balance of rupees 5,000 and B has an account balance of rupees 10,000. Now A wants to transfer rupees 2,000 to B. The whole process of money transfer is a three-step process, more or less. Check if a has rupees 2000 to transfer. If he has the amount in his account, then deduct the amount from his bank account and add rupees 2000 to B's account. Here, it would not be right if we deduct money from A's account and do not credit it to B's account because then rupees 2000 will just vanish from the banking system. Or if we credit the money to B's account but fail to deduct the same amount from A's account, then A will be happiest customer of the bank but the bank will lose rupees 2000. Hence, we can say for the money transfer process, either all steps pass successfully or all steps must be failed and the user can try again. Debit and credit passes or debit and credit fails. Enabling this behavior in databases is done using transactions and it is also represented by the symbol TX. When in a database, we have to run multiple SQL queries that affects the state of data in our database through insert, and update and delete queries, we must combine them into a single unit of work so that all of them pass together or fail together. In case even a single query fails, then the whole bundle of query executed in a transaction have to fail. And that is done using transactions in database. A transaction also follows acid properties. Acid not as the chemical acid, but ACID, where A stands for atomicity, C stands for consistency, I stands for isolation and D stands for durability. Atomicity is derived from atomic, which also means one or single, a single unit of work. Hence, no partial success, no partial failure is allowed. Either everything passes or 
if even a single step fails, then everything is marked as failed and any changes that were made have to be rolled back. C stands for consistency. When a transaction is executed, it follows the database constraints like validations on table columns or relationships like foreign key because if that is not followed, then also the state of data may become inconsistent after running a couple of insert, update or delete queries. So a transaction must follow the constraints of the database. I stands for isolation. Isolation means that if more than one process is trying to act upon the same data, then they should be allowed to do it one by one. For example, on an e-commerce website, if there is a single piece of particular t-shirt which is left and three users are trying to purchase it and coincidentally they trigger the purchase at the same time, then if the three requests are not isolated, chances are that the app will show that one piece is available to all of the three of them and will create three orders, which is not right. Hence, a transaction makes sure that it is executed in isolation and once it is completed, the next transaction is initiated. So out of the three users trying to bind the same t-shirt, one will get it, for others it will show sold out because updated inventory will show zero pieces available. Now one obvious side effect of this is that it makes the query execution slow because consecutive transactions have to wait. There is no parallel execution. But for important data, data consistency is more important than speed. Last but not the least, D stands for durability. That means whatever actions are performed, they must be permanent. So once a transaction is completed, the changes of the data are permanent. So these are asset properties. A transaction must always follow these properties because then only it will be able to do what it is supposed to do. The concept of transactions is equally theoretical and practical. I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube which says it is more of a theory thing than a practical. I totally disagree with them because we use transactions in our applications every day. All the big applications, all the big websites, all the big softwares use transactions in their softwares all the time. So it is absolutely a practical thing. Now understanding it can be theoretical, but then that is true for all the concepts. When you work on any application or a website or a software where you store data in the database and perform different operations on the data, you will understand the true value of transactions. Because to make sure multiple SQL queries are executed correctly together, maintaining the correctness of the data, you have to use database transactions. If you want me to show some practical examples of using transactions, do comment below and I will create a video where I can show you how database transactions are implemented while using a programming language in the code. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, shower your love by sharing the video with your friends and please post your sweet comments so that we can know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. If you have any confusion around database transactions, Feel free to post a comment and I'll definitely answer all the comments posted in this video. And do not forget to subscribe to the StudyTrend YouTube channel and press that bell icon. See you in the next video.